What is up, my dudes? We've got the Corporate Esports Association Dota 2 Spring 2019 tournament going on. We're in game number two of Amazon Prime Courier versus Vasita Hari Discord. And Prime Courier, they're up 1 0 in a pretty dominant display, kind of as expected. They're definitely, uh, I would say, one of the teams who are favored to win the tournament overall. But uh, mid IO that got a rampage. Oh man, that's. Uh, that's something you can't really shake. I think maybe Discord could be a little bit tilted this game. And it's like, if you if you lose to a mid IR, like, are you gonna ban the IR? That doesn't make sense. Like, that, oh, that's crazy. He just, he, okay, so they banned the IR. Uh, Alright, well, I mean, I guess like they could also just pick IR and put it in the support position next time instead as well. But, uh, I mean, pri Cakes, he just plays a ton of different heroes, I guess. Prime Courier giving some respect to the Grimstroke as well. I felt like Grimstroke didn't really have the biggest impact last game, but uh, apparently uh, weren't a ban. I guess they uh, probably they want to see something different out of Discord. They banned the Nyx Assassin as well, which uh, definitely wasn't banned last game. Shaker banned out for Discord, which is uh, I mean we didn't see Shaker at all last game. But they also banned the Batrider. I think the Batrider was a pretty big. Uh, nuisance for them. The Sensor just got completely crushed in lane by a support Batrider and then Elsie had the freest lane ever. Uh, not much that the Grimstroke Sensor lane could do against the Batrider. They're gonna open with uh, Warlock again, so having some convictions in Warlock. I mean, Warlock is a pretty good hero. Prime Korea is gonna pick Chen, which is uh, interesting. I don't think I've really seen much of the new Chen. Uh, so in this patch they changed uh, divine favor to beat an aura, but this uh, I think this is the the patch before they uh, nerfed it a lot. Hurry, Let me hurry. check. Dota Chen. So they like reduced some of the numbers for heroes and then like tripled it for creeps or something. Let's see, divine flavor. So in the patch after this game was played. It's, uh, they put Recall on Divine Favor, and it only, it doesn't grant damage anymore. And they moved the damage bonus from Divine Favor onto Holy Persuasion. So the creeps, they have bonus move speed and attack damage. Now the creeps are super strong right now. Oh, this is interesting. But that's not in this game. Uh, this is going to be the Chen with uh, Divine Favor giving damage, healing, amplification, and uh, also a Spirit Breaker, which is a kind of not a very popular pick. Uh, although we'll probably see the Spirit Breaker as position 5. I think that's the only position that Spirit Breaker can work in right now. He doesn't really farm very well. He's got one of the slowest base attack times in the game. and. He, he does okay with farm, but you can achieve like more or less the same thing as a support with nothing. Discord, they're gonna open with Warlock Shadow Shaman. I I like the Shadow Shaman like in a lot better than the Grimstroke early on, but I think they're gonna suffer again from similar issues where the support duo is just not gonna get as much done as the side of Prime Courier, uh, at least in the laning phase. Uh, Chen, being no known as a lane dominator. Uh, and uh, Spirit Breaker is pretty obnoxious to deal with as well. He's got six armor, and uh, he's pretty difficult to pin down as well because you can always just charge out of there, and it's pretty difficult to take him down. Whereas uh, these supports from Discord, they're pretty squishy. Only ten seconds. Right. Also, some different bands coming out now as well. The Coddle and Bloodseeker bands. The so Bloodseeker now that Rupture is lethal again is pretty nice. Uh, he's, they've actually completely just reverted Rupture to what it was uh, pre 7.20, which is pretty funny. It's like, we've changed Rupture, it's very different now, and then it was like, no, this is a bad spell, let's move it back to what it was before. Uh, I think Bloodseeker is probably going to come back into the meta. Usually we see him as a counter to like Pangalee, but I mean, if you rupture Bloodseeker, it's pretty annoying as well. Oh, uh, uh, Spirit Breaker. Although, now, then you're like racing Rupture on. Well, it's probably going to be a support. Uh, some different bands coming out from Discord as well. Uh, the 
TA and SF ban, or they ban SF last game, but TA is a little bit different this time. Uh, and they're going to pick Enchantress as well, so this is going to be an offlane Enchantress. Something we haven't seen too much since uh, TI8, because uh, they've nerfed her move speed by about 20, which is fairly Ten significant. Seconds. She doesn't feel like that uh, invincible offlane machine that like she used to be. And, uh, okay, that makes sense why Prime Courier banned uh, Bloodseeker. They are going to pick the Pangali, and I gotta say, this is uh, pretty scary so far. I mean, Enchantress doesn't have a whole lot of armor, and Pangali does not give a shit about your uh, untouchable. So, the Swashbuckles are gonna hurt against Enchantress, and even the other heroes, Warlock and Shadow Shaman, pretty low armor heroes. So, Pangali is gonna have a bit of a field day here. He also doesn't really care too much about the enchant, because you can uh, still Swashbuckle. And Warlock doesn't provide any lockdown. Uh, the Chaos Golem, it can stop the Rolling Thunder for a little bit, but it's like one second, so it's not really consequential for the Pangali. And they're gonna pick Ember Spirit again. I think Ember Spirit did okay. Uh, I, I'm a little bit surprised how he didn't get crushed harder in lane, but he just, uh, he kept playing without mana, and I think he, like, uh, and. Oh, Lord of Man Facebook. I guess uh, maybe the in-game uh, names are a bit different. So I think uh, these these names on the side are usually the uh, the current names of the players, but then the in-game names are like what you what the names they used in the actual game were. Maybe there's definitely some inconsistencies when you watch replays. And Prime Courier, they pick Oracle. Is this going to be an Oracle mid? No, but they 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 nerfed her uh, his base attack time by heaps. This patch is like kind of a normal hero now in terms of attack speed. It used to be very ridiculously fast, but now it's uh it's a little bit more balanced. Definitely saw Oracle a lot when uh, Oracle first came out. You would build a Yules to also dispel uh, Purifying Flames. So you get a triple Purifying Flames off, and then uh, only the third, only that final one actually uh, heals them up, which is, uh, yeah. So yeah, they, they the Oracle's base attack time increased from 1.4 to 1.7, and 1.7 is the baseline for most heroes. Uh, almost every hero has 1.7, so uh, could be okay. I mean, one of the benefits of uh, playing Oracle in mid is you can always deny the uh, the range creep. So once you get level three on Oracle, you can use a double purifying flames on the range creep and then deny it afterwards. It'll be low enough that you can deny it, and it's gonna be pretty difficult for the enemy mid to contest this. And they're going to pick Ursa as well to uh, help them frontline. So this, yeah, I think Oracle's going to be the mid this game. Uh, Cakes plays some really crazy mids. He played mid IO last game, so honestly, anything is possible. I mean, mid Pango is also on the table, but it kind of seems like they're set up to have like a core, like these three heroes be the cores: uh, Pango, Oracle, and Ursa. Only ten seconds. And there's a ton of flexibility here. They could go into any lane. Uh, although Oracle probably wants to go mid to get the early levels if it's going to be a mid Oracle. Uh, and I wonder what we're going to see from Oracle. So maybe the Yules, uh, as I described earlier, you can get the triple purifying flames. Another option is Ags. It reduces the cooldown of purifying flames to one second and also reduces the cast point. But like, that's pretty negligent. It's a, a, a non. It's not really a factor, and uh, the Broodmother, last pick, so it's not going to be a mid Oracle anymore, it's like no longer on the table, so, uh, wait, Chen? Cakes is playing Chen? Against Broodmother? This is absolute madness, hold on a second, what, what? Prime Courier, they're just like bringing the crazy this game. So, you can, uh, I guess, take over the spiders, and then they get like plus 32 damage, which is pretty cool, and they can spawn the smaller spiders as well. It's gotta make sure he uh, converts the right ones though. Is this the counter that the Broodmother everyone's been waiting for? The spiders have extra move speed and extra damage 
and he could have an army as well. I, I think uh, when you convert timed units, though, they still are timed. Uh, so he's not going to be able to just keep the spiders forever. This is this is wild. Just so I think uh, game no items on the Chen. He's literally bought nothing. No tangos either. He's okay. He's got to be a mid Chen. What? Also, Meow Meow's joined the game. Uh, he was not in the previous game, so that's a uh, much easier name to pronounce than the whatever the Venge's name last game was. <laughs> so, pretty normal lanes uh, from Prime Courier. I don't think they're going to be. There's no big surprises. Broodmother uh, used to be a pretty prominent offlane hero, but I think mid is definitely the lane for it. If you can take over the lane, you can uh, always farm this camp. Uh, on the dire side as well is really nice. You can farm these two camps really easily. On um, If you're playing Radiant Brood, it's not as good because this camp is like way further away from the mid tower, and uh, so is this camp. So uh, Definitely see Broodmother more often on uh, Dire side because it's way easier to uh, farm the Radiant camps, uh, ironically. But uh, it's going to be a four position Spirit Breaker instead of a five position Spirit Breaker. Uh, picked up an early Orb of Venom, so it's going to be able to uh, just duke it out with this Warlock, Searing Chains onto the Chen. And uh, I mean, Chen is. Uh, what the hell is going on here? So Chen's going to go off lane. Alright. So putting the Pango against Brute makes way more sense. I think they just like try to bait and juke them out a little bit. This Brute Mother's gonna arrive in mid and be pretty debated. And Pango, he can uh, he can absolutely destroy these spiders. So this is not a good lane for Emmy dies alone. He's gonna have a pretty tough mid game, I would say. Once you get enough points in the swashbuckle, you just one shot the spiders. They uh, have a lot of magic resist, but they don't have a lot of armor. But still, Core Chen going for Medallion first as uh, most modern Chen builds go. And I mean, Chen has a pretty good base, uh, his pretty good projectile animation, a uh, pretty good uh, base attack time as well, so it's, uh, it's not too bad. I mean, it's a pretty normal base attack time, but uh, the projectile animation is good. I kind of wanted to see the mid Chen, but I guess uh, Cakes is a non-believer against Broodmother. Uh, okay, well it, it was worth the dream, I think. So bot lane, uh, I mean Ursa typically is a pretty good counter against Enchantress. It was like definitely one of the TI counters. We used to see, we saw Enchantress like every single game at TI that where she wasn't banned, and then everyone was picking Ursa or PL. Is PL with the uh, 44 bonus agility? He uh, hits really hard uh, with the max Phantom Rush, but Ursa with the overpower, it's a uh, 400 bonus attack speed against uh, this measly 170 untouchable. Oh, I think this also got nerfed a lot. I feel like this used to be like 200. Now the big fortress end comes out. Oracle should probably look to uh, save his mana so that he hits level three, and then he can really blow up this enchantress, right? The, uh, the cakes. He gets the first blood against unsatisfied punk. Uh, picks up this uh, magic resist sensor. Uh, it's got plus eight armor, so it hits pretty hard for a creep. Way tougher than the regular neutrals. Charge forward onto Pakistan burrito, and uh, looks like he's gonna be okay at least. Nice fatal bonds onto the two heroes, but. Not gonna be able to get too much more. Kid Wonderful picks up the illusion. He's got two points in the swashbuckle now, so. Um, they have 280 HP, and the swashbuckle does uh, 42 times 4. So uh, it's 160 ish. I think he needs 4 points in the swashbuckle to kill them, but also with a shield crash, uh, so maybe 3 points in the. Swashbuckle and then one, two points in the shield crash. I don't really see a reason for him to take uh, Lucky Shot this uh, this lane. And uh, nice, he actually just barely isn't able to take out these spiders. But one more level in the swashbuckle should push him out of the lane. It's pretty important you actually kill the spiders because there's a lot of regen with the uh, with the spider webs. No, no. So. Emmy dies alone. He might actually go down here. He's getting really low, and there's another combo from uh, Kid Wonderful. He gets another swashbuckle off, but uh, isn't going to be able to finish off Emmy dies alone, it seems. 
but Amy Dazzler is having a pretty rough lane. One thing to note is the uh, the spiders don't really scale. Uh, the HP and damage of the spiders is the same at every level, so uh, 280 is going to be the same. And PK goes down to Lieutenant Dan here. It's a level 3 Oracle, so big burst damage. And Ember Spirit actually gets taken out top. Uh, Chen, with the level 2 uh, Holy Persuasion, is able to take over the... Uh, the centaur now he's also got this mana burn creep which is pretty nice it's very annoying for the uh, ember spirit to deal with although it's not a big mana burn i think it's only like 50 right that's 100 so not bad why not just use it on the um ember spirit he's uh State of Mind Steel is getting pretty low. Steering chains onto chen but a charge forward the chen doesn't have any creeps anymore so yeah, that's a bit of a wasted fader bonds in my opinion it only linked the heroes and none of the creeps and Panga is going to pick up the haste rune at bot, so it should help him uh, just chase down the brood mother. And PK goes down again. I don't think there's much that, more that the shadow shaman can do in this lane, but at the same time, you can't really leave the enchantress alone. The Ursa doesn't care about um, untouchable, and also the Oracle deals 500 magic damage uh, with his combo. So it's so. Uh, Again, the laning phase is looking very rough for Discord. I think top is going a little bit better, even though the Ember Spirit has died twice, so maybe not. And, uh, looks like Warlock's going to be in a bit of trouble here. The Purge Creeper as well, there's no way that this Warlock can get away. So, Ember Spirit will at least be able to get one of the Bounty Runes this time. Last time they lost all four at both the 0 and the 5 minute mark. So, doing a little bit better on Bounty Runes. Ember Spirit forced to pop his, uh... Flame guard this early on, and now with a three, three, uh, yeah, actually not leveling up Rolling Thunder, but maybe just wanting to win this lane a bit harder as the Panko. And once you know, he gets four, four, he can uh, one shot the Creep Wave. So there's not a whole lot that the uh, Broodmother can do to pressure the enemy tower because his Creep Wave is just gonna die really quickly every time. If you can get the spiders with the uh, Swashbuckle Shield Crash as well, that'd be really nice. But Broodmother should try her best to not get uh, both her creep wave and the uh, spiders killed at the same time. Already with the javelin as well. And Ember Spirit goes down again! I mean, this purge creep, it's doing a ton of work actually. It gets rid of the flame guard entirely, so they have nothing to be afraid of anymore. I mean, this purge creep is huge. They need to keep it alive as long as they can. And uh, gets another centaur creep. Uh, I don't think I don't know if Ember should come back to this lane. Maybe maybe Enchantress should come up here and then Ember goes bot because this. I mean, all of their lanes are looking pretty rough, but I feel like Enchantress probably has a better chance once she gets uh, two points in Untouchable, which she already has. Not actually putting a uh, third point in Untouch, not putting a third point in Untouchable, which is a little bit odd. But Searing Chains will miss on the Spirit Breaker. He's not going to be able to get it, and the Flame Guard gets purged off now. Shadow Sharm is going to TP in, but a greater bash onto the Ember Spirit will finish him off. And uh, now these supports are also in a lot of trouble. The Sentinel has a ton of HP that uh, have to work through this. Uh, Purge Creep is going to go down, unfortunately. Yeah, Pango with a ton of last hits, but most of these are spiders. He's still dominating the uh, the net worth chart, having a pretty good start so far. Gonna go straight for a Maelstrom. I think that makes a lot of sense. There's not really any reason for him to build a defensive item like Greaves this early on. He's having a fantastic lane. He's also not looking to team fight, and really, there's nothing to really stop him, right? There's not unless the Shadow Shaman manages to get up close and personal for a Hex Shackles. There's not much lockdown for him. He can always Rolling Thunder out of the. Uh, Steering chains, and Ember Spirit's not really in a position to rotate either. He doesn't care about the uh, enchant either. So this is a pretty easy Pango game, to be honest. Lieutenant Dan gonna go straight for a Morbid Boss, and uh, he can take Roche whenever he wants after he gets it. Only one point in the overpower, which is, uh, it's okay. He's actually put a point in Earthshock early on, which you don't really see too often anymore. Uh, PK gets taken out here, and they can't really contest the Chen anymore. It's pretty scary. D D Medallion as well, and oh, Pakistan Breeder, he's just gonna get taken out here. Two bashes in a row. One of them was the uh, the charge, but gets double bashed and taken out. That was pretty huge. And Ember Spirit having a worse game than last game already. 
Oh. Big swashbuckle on the uh, Broodmother, but doesn't have enough mana to follow up. There's needs to get Arcane Boots soon. But another huge swashbuckle! He just needs to uh, bottle up a bit more, but it looks like Brood's gonna get out of there. And another kill on Ember Spirit! He just TP'd into the lane! He needs to leave this lane, I don't know what he's continuing to do here. DZ Bug also might go down here. The um, Spirit's come out though, so I think she'll be okay. So, uh, I was trying to say earlier that there was a time when everyone used to go 4 points in Earthshock. It was about probably 8 months ago. And then uh, they added 1 hit onto Overpower at every level, which is actually pretty huge because uh, now Fury Swipes... It's an extra Fury Swipes hit, right? So... Uh, no, wait. I'm trying to think. No, they, that's the reason why everyone started going Earthshock. So you used to feel pretty pressured to level up Overpower earlier on, but now that... The extra hit makes a pretty big difference. It was enabling people to go Earthshock first. But I think like everything's just turned around and everyone's going for like uh, this Fury Swipes Overpower build again. Not uh, 044, M Pango in a little bit of trouble. He doesn't have mana for a Rolling Thunder. So committing a little bit too hard there, but that was a four man rotation from uh, Discord and uh, Broodmother in a little bit of trouble, but we okay, and uh, Spirit Breaker also just casually feeds his life away. So, 2 for 0, a much needed change for them. But 10 minute bounty runes are up, and it's going to be all 4 bounty runes, so space created for Prime Courier. That's uh, definitely what the Pango and Spirit Breaker are saying in chat. And you say, easiest money of my life, definitely the way to go. Very much worth it. Um... And it's a 9k gold lead again, at 10 minutes into the game, so a little bit uh, higher than last time. And <laughs> Brood in a ton of trouble now, but actually uh, gets pushed, actually doesn't take the hit from the uh, Rolling Thunder here. One more Rolling Thunder hit, and Brood's going to go down the shield crash in two seconds, but oh, not going to be enough there. Purifying Flame's going to heal up the Brood Mother, so thanks for the heals, Oracle. But Spirit Breaker's charging in pretty aggressively, and he's on level 6 as well, so Brood Mother going to get taken down. Dextro secures that kill with the uh, the Never Strike. Dyer's middle tower is being attacked. And uh, Chen, he can't dominate Siege Creeps anymore, unfortunately, but the Chen army's still pretty good. Warlock's going to get... Uh, taken out here as well. He just walked a little bit too far forward and got spited by the Spirit Breaker. And Spirit Breaker gonna go straight for a Silver Edge and I like this a lot. He's already got the urn so it's definitely the next item you can uh, you can Shadow Blade during the charge as well so it's like pretty obnoxious. Also a ton of extra damage on the first hit as well. I think you can uh, also get the uh, Silver Edge damage on the Nether Strike doesn't cancel TPs to like wind it up. You don't need to break the TP when you actually uh, commit to it. Shadow Shaman, he's going to get charged here. Lieutenant Dan isn't really in a position to help him out, but he turns on the Overpower now. He doesn't have a blink yet, but Earthshock level 2 now, so Shadow Shaman not even to be able to get any spells off. And uh, they didn't see him coming. They probably should have saw him coming, right? Like, there was this ward here, but maybe uh, Spirit Breaker ch charging through the trees, so not enough time to get the Hex on him. I feel like... I feel like uh, the Shadow Shaman probably should have seen that, but maybe would have died anyway, because uh, after he hexes, it's only a level 1 hex. Oh, it's a level 2 hex, actually. Oh, had to sneeze there. It's uh, only 2 seconds on the hex. I don't think Spirit, uh, Shadow Shaman will be able to get away, because the Spirit Breaker can just uh, never strike him. A tool to teach. And uh, the Arcane Rune gets popped instantly by the Fortune's End. Very unfortunate for the um, Ember Spirit. And I mean, they picked Ember Spirit into an Oracle, so it's uh, pretty rough to be honest. <coughs> Dextro in a lot of trouble now. This Enchantress throwing out the impetuses, but it looks like it's going to be okay. The Remnant goes out defensively, but I don't know if Pakistan Breeder want to commit to this. They don't have Slide of Fist yet on the Ember Spirit. He's only level 7? Got dumpsted pretty hard in the lane, and a blink forward from the Ursa, I think that's his blink reveal as well. So Pakistan Burrito forced to back out, and a charge forward for the uh, Spirit Breaker, not going to commit to it. Although he probably could have gone for it, to be honest. The Searing Chains is on cooldown, and he has the Nether Strike, so probably could have picked off uh, Pakistan Burrito there. 
And the Ursa could have been there to uh, zone out the other two heroes. I think he maybe could have gone for it, but we're just going to play safe for now. And Pank Leak going for another Javelin, so probably going to see MKB as his next item. He's just going to go all out on the damage, because they know there's not a whole lot to take him out. The easy bug gets taken out by Meow Meow here. Shackles onto the Ursa, but not really going to do much to stop him. Lieutenant Den, he's going to run wild now. Pakistan Burrito, he doesn't have a defensive remnant to go back to, so he's going to take get taken out here. He gets st uh, stun locked as well, so not much he can do here. Swashbuckle forward from Kid Wonderful, but he completely whiffs. Cancels the Rolling Thunder as well, and uh, Cakes in the meantime, he's just going to take top tower. He's got a Necro Books as well, so I don't think it makes his, uh... Oh, wait, hold on. Yeah, it doesn't give any extra damage to them. Maybe you can, uh, Holy Persuasion them, but I, I don't think it's going to work. Uh, Broodmother getting charged here, and might actually get taken out. The Centaur stunning the Broodmother a little bit, and there's no Nether Strike right now. Maybe trying to deny himself to the uh, Kreese, but I think... I feel like Brood could have maybe gotten out there, but maybe... I uh, didn't have enough mana for uh, a spin web. No, wait, he used the Soul Ring. I think he could have just, like, spun another web and maybe walked out of there, but it would have been pretty close. Uh, Roshan out available with an Ursa, it's pretty easy to take. And Prime Courier, they're running away with this game. 16k gold advantage, 15 minutes into the game. And they're going to be able to get all four bounty runes again as well. Uh, if someone goes for top, it seems like Ember Spirit is interested. Ember, they gave him the tome. They actually gave him both the tomes, but tome has a five minute cooldown now, so it doesn't work like that. So Age is secure now, and uh, they don't have the strongest pushes on uh, on Prime Courier, but everyone from Discord is so far behind, and they needed to have a good start. Broodmother is not a hero who comes back into the game, and Chantress is not a hero who can come back into the game. They both don't farm that quickly. Broodmother, he just wants to dominate the lane and then uh, just control this mid area, but he wasn't able to do that with the Pangalier pick. I mean, they picked Broodmother into Pango, so... Pango almost done with an MKB, and his damage output is going to skyrocket now. He's probably going to be able to one-shot these supports. Uh, maybe not. He's going to do a ton of damage to these supports, though. Charge in onto the Broodmother, and it looks like he's going to commit for this. Uh, he gets hexed. But Ursa blinks in, and Shadow Shaman gonna get blown up here by the Swashbuckle. The Rolling Thunder comes out, and the Fortune's End's gonna hit DZ Bugs, so he's gonna get taken out as well. So two heroes down now, and uh, they don't have the Serpent Wars to defend here. Although, uh, one of the downsides of being this far behind, you respawn very quickly. The uh, tower under siege now by the Chen army with the Necro Books. So a lot of units here. Blink forward from the Tether Den onto the. Uh, Warlock, they can go for more, but uh, for some reason Ursa decides not to back him up. But a big swashbuckle from Pango would do a ton of damage here. He doesn't even have his MKB yet. Once he gets it, it's going to do so much more damage as well. And blink forward again from uh, the Ursa. And uh, disarm onto the Ember Spirit. It's going to be okay. He's got another tome ready in uh, 5 seconds. So he's going to get level 10. But I don't think it's going to make too much of a difference here. Buy back on the Warlock. He has ulti. Amy dies alone, caught out on the back lines by himself. He's gonna get charged and taken out. A huge kill. Uh, the Broodmother was trying to cut the wave, but Spirit Breaker just charged him. But also Pango dealing a ton of damage there. Uh, not using, not grabbing his uh, quarter staff still. And Chantra stealing Chen's creep, but uh, gonna take it out instead. Big, uh, Fatal Buns, but it gets purged off instantly by the Oracle, they're only on himself. Oracle is just healing up his team. Uh, they definitely have the sustain for this, especially with the Chen. And Chen just gets instantly blown up here. Hex onto the Ursa, but uh, now Pango is just rolling through the back lines. Shadow Shaman goes down. Ember Spirit, he's in pretty aggressively, but he's going to get taken down as well. He doesn't have buyback. The Chaotic Offering goes down, but Warlock also going to go down here. And the Golem's not going to be able to do a whole lot by itself. It's actually going to get taken out in a few swipes from the, the Pango Lee. And Pango finally has his MKB, but this game's looking like it's pretty over at this point. See if he's able to show it off. Red Mother just standing here off to the side, uh, probably blaming his teammates. Uh, oh, I'm trolling a little bit there. But this game is looking pretty over. 
And Prime Courier, they smashed them again! The core Chen, a little bit weird, but I thought it was going to be a mid Chen, but they, they adapted here. I think this would have been maybe a more interesting game if Chen went mid, but I think uh, the other lanes still would have got dumpstered. And uh, Swashbuckle completely whiff. Uh, Penitence comes out onto the Ember Spirit, so some extra damage on him. And Blink Forward from the Ursa. He dodges most of the Swashbuckle with the uh, Slider Fist though. And the uh, Rolling Thunder comes out onto the Brood Mother, but isn't able to get the Chain Lock. Big Fortune's End will slow down, and the Swashbuckle completely blows up the Brood Mother from 70% HP. One more Swashbuckle. He actually has no mana left, uh, but PK gonna be in a lot of trouble here. He's gonna get taken out by the Necro Books. Discord not wanting to call GG yet, yeah, they're gonna get eliminated if uh, they call GG, so he's about to stay in the game for as long as he can. Pakistan Burrito gets a kill on Cakes, that's a wicked stick streak going his way, he buys back instantly, and maybe Prime Courier are gonna back out, but they could probably go for more. Uh, just gotta play it safe maybe. See if Pakistan Burrito, he actually eats a big swashbuckle to the face, it gets Instantly taken out a dieback for the Ember Spirit, not leaving a remnant. But he also got first hit bash and another huge swash buckle. Looks like uh, Shadow Shaman's gonna go down here. Mega kill on Kid Wonderful and buy back on Shadow Shaman. And they're pretty low on mana, so maybe they should just uh, heal up real quick. But Dextro charges in. The Aegis has expired, so Lieutenant Dan's gonna get most of his mana back. But it looks like he got cancelled and uh, Enchantress. Like I said earlier, the uh, Untouchable doesn't really care. Uh, Opal doesn't really care about Untouchable. And Broodmother looks like it's going to go down as well. Charge forward from the uh, Spirit Breaker, but not going to charge into the base. They finally get the racks here. And Kid Wonderful has a bunch of manners to work with again. And uh, Cakes is back. He's trying to, get, he's trying to rebuild his army because uh, he lost most of it. So Discord gonna die a slow and painful death here. Uh, Pango almost with a Greaves as well, so should help him sustain his mana a bit better. There's a T2 tower at bot, but Spirit Breaker with the, the classic Spirit Breaker split push, and Pango's just gonna do a lot of work up here. T Force finally under siege. And a hex onto the Pangalee here. He gets ward trapped, so he might actually go down. He doesn't have any defensive items, and he gets taken out here, but a blink forward from Lieutenant Dan instantly assassinates the uh, Shadow Shaman. That's a die back on Shadow Shaman. S uh, Searing Chains onto Lieutenant Dan, but he instantly rages it off, and uh, Pakistan Breeder, he's in deep. The Warlock ulti comes out with the big fatal bonds, and it's doing a pretty decent amount of work. It looks like Ursa's gonna go down here. Uh, actually, uh, Discord picking up a few kills as their last hurrah. And it looks like Bridmother's gonna chase down the Oracle as well, but Oracle jukes him through the trees. Oracle still underneath the web, so it looks like Meow Meow's gonna get taken out here, and uh, Spirit Breaker also taken out, so somehow Discord have managed to get themselves four kills. Although Meow Meow's gonna take a while, so four kills, it's a bit of a throw, but 3200 gold swing as well going the way of Discord, but it's a little bit too late in my opinion. I don't. There's still 27k gold behind. This uh, this gold lead is so insurmountable for them. It's still at 100% win rate for uh, for Prime Courier. When you lose this Rax this early, these uh, creeps give half the gold, so like their economy is really stifled as well. But showing signs of life. Pango with the Greaves now as well, so he finally has a defensive item for himself. Should make it a bit more difficult to kill him now. It's a nice ward trap by uh, the Shadow Shaman there. And I think this courier could probably die to a swashbuckle if it's not careful. It does have the uh, shield right now, but he's trying to get the swashbuckle on the courier. It's like spell immune, but the, the swashbuckle does physical damage, so it doesn't really care about it. But it looks like it's gonna get away. Oh, the swashbuckle misses! Ah, uh, Pango not able to get it. And he used the shield crash to get out of there. He, he activates the rolling thunder. He's able to clip three heroes with it. And this could be really big for him. Another big shield crash comes out. Looks like uh, uh, he completely whiffs on the, sh uh, the swashbuckle. But uh, Ursa, he's in now. Uh, he instantly blows up the shadow shaman. And another swashbuckle is available soon. So it looks like. Uh, 
He whips again! Ah, uh, Kid Wonderful, what are you doing, mate? But it doesn't really matter. Two heroes down. Uh, Broodmother caught out by herself and gonna get taken out as well. To a double kill for Kid Wonderful, even though he's whiffed all of his spells so far. And, uh,. Looks like Enchantress also going to get taken out. A triple kill for Kid Wonderful, but they're not going to be able to give him the Rampage. Although, uh, Warlock is... Actually, he's got a Glimmer Cape. It's going to be pretty hard to kill the Warlock at this point. Also with 1,500 HP. And GG is called. And uh, Amazon Prime Crew, they're going to move on to the semi-finals uh, to play up against Microsoft Bane and Rana Kanks. Discord will unfortunately be eliminated here, but... I think they uh, they got outdrafted a little bit. Like straight up, I, I, the Prime Courier just showed that they're a way superior team, and there's no shame in losing to someone who's better than you. Hopefully, uh, they've learned something from this, and uh, we'll see how Prime Courier do in the semi-finals against Amazon, oh Microsoft, uh, Bane and Moronic Ganks.